Cohen has been caught being less than truthful, where now with this revelation today that he stole money from the Trump organization, the defense can paint him not only as a liar and an unreliable narrator, but now also as a thief. I want to pull up a graphic of, of this critical exchange here where uh, Trump attorney Todd Blanche says, you stole from the Trump organization, right? Michael Cohen says, yes, sir. Got him. But did he? Did the defense representing Donald Trump manage to discredit the prosecution star witness, Trump's former fix it attorney, Michael Cohen? Well, it could actually cut either way, and I'll explain why in just a moment. But just to fill in the blanks a little more, while being pressed by defense attorney Todd Blanche, Cohen admitted that he pocketed cash while that was supposed to be a reimbursement for a $50,000 payment Cohen claimed he had shelled out to a technology firm. I believe it was called Red Finch, that was the name of the firm. But Cohen actually gave the technology firm just $20,000, he said. So just to give you a bit of the exchange that occurred between Cohen and the defense attorney Todd Blanche. Blanche asked, so you stole from the Trump organization? Yes, sir, Cohen replied. Cohen said he never paid the Trump organization back. Cohen has never been charged with stealing from Trump's company. Now, the way that it was laid out makes it appear as though he pocketed $30,000 out of the $50,000 that he was given by the Trump organization to reimburse this tech firm. However, the Trump organization paid him even more than that in order to cover taxes, similar to what has been alleged in regard to the reimbursements to Cohen for the hush money payment that he paid Stormy Daniels, the $130,000. The Trump org apparently paid him more than that in order to cover the taxes associated with that what appears to be income that Cohen had taken from the Trump organization as a reimbursement. Although the falsified records have to do with the fact that the Trump organization claimed that it wasn't for reimbursement, that it was for legal services. Now, defense attorneys are trying to shatter Cohen's credibility. And so pointing to the fact that he had decided to steal money from the Trump organization could do that. However, Jake, I think that there's also a possibility that this testimony makes clear that Cohen was like this middleman for Trump, right? Much like with the hush money payment to Stormy Daniels. Why doesn't Trump just reimburse or the Trump organization just directly reimburse the tech firm? Why are they doing it through Michael Cohen, right? Yeah. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. Yeah, why are they doing it in a brown paper bag? <laughs> Giving them, I mean, that's so, is that how a normal business pays their bills? Okay, look, I, 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 it depends on how the prosecution takes this and how good a job they do in their closing statement. But I disagree with all of cable news. I think that this is terrible for Donald Trump. So uh, almost everybody on cable news is like, oh, stop. Michael Cohen stole from the Trump organization and he admitted it, it ruins his credibility. Do you guys live on this planet? Like who thought Michael Cohen was an angel? And that he was like this pristine guy who'd never done anything wrong. And that now you're shocked to find out that he did some things wrong when he worked at the Trump organization. Of course, he worked for Donald Trump. They would pay people in brown with cash in brown paper bags. It's like a criminal organization. The reason why I say it's actually devastating for Trump is because the main argument that the Trump people have, his defense is, Oh, Donald Trump didn't know anything about these payments that Michael Cohen was making to Stormy Daniels. Remember, they're still saying that Michael that Trump doesn't even know Stormy Daniels. That they never tape. had an affair. Jake, he's on tape. <laughs> Trump was on tape talking about the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. What, what is he doing? What it, are you no, doing? It's madness. It's madness. So, so their theory is Michael Cohen is a dastardly, evil, non-credible thief who stole 30,000 or less from the Trump organization in that one time. 
But out of the goodness of his heart, he paid $130,000 to Stormy Daniels to take care of Trump's problems. Even though Trump didn't ask him to, he was just paying with his own money because he just felt like it. Because yeah. Michael Cohen is such a good guy. I got to <laughs> jump in. It's, Go on. it's even more absurd when you consider the fact that Michael Cohen took out an equity line of credit. He borrowed against his own house. In order to have the $130,000 in cash to pay off Stormy Daniels. So what I'm, is I'm, I, let's just talk about normal human behavior, normal human behavior. I wouldn't take out an equity line of credit against my house unless like someone in my family is dying of cancer and I need to pay for the treatments. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm sorry, I love you, Jenk. I would never do it for you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Unless you're dying of cancer, then I would do it for you. But like to okay. help you but, but with 50, like 50 at that point. <laughs> <laughs> but to <laughs> help you with like silencing someone who's gonna come out and say something publicly about you that's embarrassing to you. Sorry, Jake, you'll be all right. You're gonna you're gonna survive it, okay? <laughs> yeah. But Michael Cohen is such a saint he <laughs> did it for Trump anyway. That's their contention. Insane. And all of cable news thinks that's oh yeah, that's such a good point. Look, they don't think that that's a good point to be fair to cable news. They're just acting in such histrionics like, oh, shocking testimony. Turns out Michael Cohen stole some money. Oh, I, be I can't believe it. No one will believe him anymore because everyone is totally pure and no one has ever lied before and the jury will be stunned by it. Come on, guys, come on. Yeah. Well, there's another moment that happened last week that we actually didn't cover and there's an update to it that I think is worth getting into. And it has to do with Michael Cohen getting caught in an alleged lie during cross examination Thursday of last week. So Blanche, Todd Blanche, the defense attorney for Trump accused Cohen of lying about the purpose of a phone call to Trump's bodyguard days before Cohen wired Daniel's lawyer $130,000. So here's an explanation of what that alleged lie was. Cohen telling the jury unequivocally that Mr. Trump's bodyguard, Keith Schiller, passed the phone to Mr. Trump on October 24th, 2016 at 8.02 p.m. Cohen says he informed Mr. Trump at the time the deal to pay off Stormy Daniels would be done. Blanche today raising his voice saying that was a lie. Showing the jury never before seen text messages suggesting the call was for another purpose entirely. Cohen had earlier reached out to Schiller for help dealing with a 14 year old prank caller and Schiller texted back telling Cohen to call him. Logs show a call on October 24th that lasted just 97 seconds. The defense's clear implication, the phone was never passed to Mr. Trump. Cohen appearing blindsided. Blanche grilling him, that was a lie. You did not talk to President Trump. You talked to Keith Schiller, you can admit it. Cohen responding, no, sir, I don't know that it's accurate. Cohen adding, I believe I also spoke to Mr. Trump about the Stormy Daniels matter. Blanche shooting back, we are not asking what you believe. This jury does not want to hear what you think happened. So it was widely reported last week, Oh, Cohen gets caught in a lie, he gets caught in a lie. And today, the response to that is maybe we're not entirely sure because the prosecution has found a photo of Trump with his bodyguard, Keith Schiller, on October 24th, 2016, right around 7.57 PM. That was around the time that Cohen had the conversation with Schiller. And so that doesn't necessarily mean that Cohen definitely spoke to Trump just because Trump was with Schiller at the time. But the prosecution wanted to use this evidence today and Todd Blanche lost it. The defense lost it over this and there was a big brouhaha about whether or not Justice Mershon would allow that new evidence into court. It appears that he did not feel that it was as relevant as other issues that Mershon wanted to focus on. But overall, the tactic coming from the defense is that you know the star witness for the prosecution, Michael Cohen, is not to be trusted. And so any final statements on that, Jank, before we move on to Robert Costello getting into it with the judge? Yeah, you just can't have it both ways. You can't say that. Oh, uh, Donald, uh, that Michael Cohen is a bastard 
who steals and lies and is the worst guy in the world and you shouldn't trust a word he says. And Michael Cohen's a saint who paid $130,000 out of his own pocket to help a buddy without even asking him. And does he want it, does he not want it? He just assumed, you know what, I'll just take one for the Gipper. Does Michael Cohen look like a guy who's gonna take one for the Gipper? Okay, so no, it's absurd. Of course, Trump told him to do it. And that's why he paid the $130,000. Now, the prosecution has already rested its case. The judge has stated that closing arguments are expected to take place a day after Memorial Day, which would be on May 28th. But speaking of the judge, I just wanted to get into one final thing that happened in court today. And that had to do with a witness that was called by the defense. And that witness was former federal prosecutor Robert Costello, who previously had a relationship with Michael Cohen, had even suggested that he represent Michael Cohen when he was dealing with his own legal woes. And so during his testimony, now remember, he. Costello is now against Michael Cohen. He is the witness for the defense. And so during his testimony, he was claiming that Michael Cohen had told him that Donald Trump knew nothing about the hush money payments, which is laughable testimony considering the fact that Donald Trump is literally on tape. Like speaking, one of the videos is him speaking to Fox News where he acknowledges the hush money payments. So the idea that Trump didn't know about the hush money payments has already been disproven by the record. But nonetheless, he's arguing this and there were objections by the prosecutors and the judge kept sustaining the objections. And as he was sustaining the objections, Robert Costello kept like saying things under his breath, like geez, and like, you know, basically disagreeing with sustaining the objections. And so Judge Juan Mershon ended up clearing the courtroom to dress down Robert Costello over his behavior in the courtroom. Look, these are the, again, the, the drama of the Trump trial. And with the judge saying, are you trying to stare me down? Like this doesn't happen in normal court proceedings. And that's because in most court proceedings, the defendant doesn't himself, his witnesses, his co-workers showing up to the trial, doing press conferences, all in an effort to intimidate the judge, bully the judge, bully the witnesses, bully everyone involved. It doesn't normally happen because defendants are worried that pissing off the judge is gonna get you convicted and more time, etc. But Trump's a natural born bully. So like, cause the defense team didn't want to bring in Costello. They're like, he's just gonna aggravate everybody, right? And Trump's like, God, I like that. <laughs> and Trump ordered him to testify, right? Not, not to Costello, but to his defense lawyers, let him testify. And yep. he antagonized the judge just like Trump wanted him to, cuz he has an enormous entitlement complex. He so thinks, you're not the boss of me, I'm the boss of you. And and that's the kind of bully Trump is. So this is according to Jake Tapper's reporting. The judge told Costello in a raised voice when he told the jury to leave, "Mr. Costello, you're to remain seated." The jury leaves, then Costello after another sustained objection uh, Costello rolls his eyes, lets out an audible sigh, side glances the judge. The judge says, quote, I want to discuss proper decorum in my courtroom. The judge says, you don't give me a side eye and you don't roll your eyes. If you don't like my ruling, you don't say geez, you don't say strike it. Uh, Costello holds a long stare at the judge. The judge asks, are you staring me down? Then the judge says, clear the courtroom. <laughs> it's just. Total circus, total circus. Look, I've been involved in tons of debates and some trials, okay? So at debates, you'll see me roll my eyes. And and sometimes I do it involuntarily and sometimes I do it on purpose. Somebody makes an outrageous point and I'll go, whoa, right? <laughs> okay, I've never done that in a trial. Why? Because it's not gonna help your case. You're gonna make the judge really angry. But Trump thinks I'm above the law. How dare this judge try to enforce the law on an elite like me? I am among the elites. So, well, we're gonna find out. Um, so I'm super curious to see how the ruling in this case is gonna go and, uh, and how all of this concludes. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. 
you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.